Hello everyone, how are you doing today? Hey, before we get too far, remember to like or subscribe this video, please. Any Anything helps, so if you like what you're seeing, don't be afraid to tell your family, your friends, what you're seeing and, and, uh, and share. And so anything helps. Uh, this helps substantiate my time that I spend towards these videos. Uh, but today we're gonna do something a little bit different, a little less action. I'm gonna kind of explain some stuff. Uh, I'm gonna walk you through what we feed our cattle out on this feedlot so that you can better understand what goes into every ingredient why certain ingredients are fed to cattle so that you can understand later down the road what it took to uh, make a steak on your plate. First, I'm gonna go up these stairs to the top of our grain bin so you can get a good shot. We're gonna be in our bunker that stores everything, but I'm gonna come all the way to the top to give a good view for you. So right now I'm on top of one of our grain bins here that store our corn. Uh, yes, I am holding three points of contact. Don't worry, everybody. And a nice little view. Um, the sun's about to set. Uh, but we're gonna be over here going through all of our different ingredients. And this is kind of our main bunker for uh, everything that we feed our cattle. And uh, you even saw in an earlier video grinding some of this hay down here. But these grain bins hold our corn and one of the main ingredients. But uh, this is where we're gonna be when I'm talking through everything. Okay, so here's the bunker that they use for all storing all the feed and where we load up the feed wagon. This is all cement and then there are cement kind of walls that are put in. They put this in about, oh man, probably been 10 plus years ago now. Uh, but we'll just step through each little compartment so that you understand what's in each one and why and, and what it looks like and we'll go through that. Okay. So we're walking up here. This is the wet corn, okay? So corn is a pretty big mainstay to feeding cattle. Um, corn's really important to any, any livestock, really. So this corn right here was combined last fall and immediately after it was combined, they grind it up and then we're packing it down. So it might look different than you might normally see but this is just ground up corn that's down to kind of a little bit more dust but there's still some chunks in there and that really helps the cattle digest the feed a lot better so the reason why they have this one separate is this corn was combined wet so what I mean by that is usually corn you're gonna combine it under 20% moisture in a perfect world we all know that doesn't necessarily happen uh, but this was combined probably somewhere around 25% moisture just depends on how it's going or the day. Um, and they do that because it grinds better and then the corn also stays a lot more moist and it's not near as dry. So think about if you're eating a sandwich or your bread and it gets a little dry, it doesn't go down as well um, compared to if you have a nice thick piece of bread. It's the same theory, I mean, with cattle. They're just, they're animals just like us. If something's gonna taste a little better, go down a little easier, they're gonna do better, they're gonna eat more and that means they're gonna gain more weight uh, per day is what we want. So corn's a big ingredient, more when we get to the end of the feeding ration for the, the cattle. So we do a lot of fat cattle here where think of the, the steaks and, and more of the things like that, um, prime rib, your top sirloin steak, rather more your cows your, um, are gonna be your hamburger. You'll still have hamburger in your, in your steers and your heifers that finish out, but this is what really fattens them up. There's a lot of starch, a lot of energy in it, and this is what really fattens them up. So this is what you feed them off with. Um, but when they're younger, you don't feed quite as much of this corn to them because um, think of it just like you're, just like people. You know, when you have kids growing, um, they don't. They just need a good balanced diet. It's not necessarily so much about having a lot of protein. Um, but as you know, maybe get older and you become an adult and you're done growing and you just need, you know, say, good protein and energy to build muscle, that's what this is about, where it's less about having um, all, your, all your ingredients and all your vitamins as much. It's about getting that, that fat and that energy to really finish them off and put a lot of fat in that meat. And that's, that's what makes your steak great is when it has a lot of marbling, a lot of fat. And so 
this is what you'll kind of see in some of the ingredients and like i said this is a really important one something they've started to do here recently what they really like because you can put this corn in here it's really valuable the, the, the cattle love it and it's got a nice powder to it and it just mixes in really well and uh yeah so that's kind of this area and we'll have another one too so this is a wet corn and we'll show you dry corn later but just think this is kind of this was combine ground up right away at 25 percent moisture this is not necessarily the corn that was in the grain bins like i said this came straight from the field the corn in the grain bins is going to be more of your dry corn and this has to be ground up right away because if you were to put corn that that's that much moisture in it in the grain bins you would start to spoil it wouldn't do quite as well so that's a big reason why it's got to be ground up packed in because if you put it in the grain bin it'd spoil and we'd have big problems um, and that's why you tend to you combine corn a lot drier so they can store better in the grain bin okay let's walk around here and then this is our corn silage okay this is corn silage There's, might be some other haylage other things that people do but this is our corn silage so this was cut last year last time we usually do it right around end of august first part of september i think labor day is always kind of the metric if we whether or not we cut it before or after um so this is a really good energy source um for cattle i mean we feed a lot of this to the cows so when you have your cows with your baby calves they don't need all that corn like that you just saw over there it's not necessarily about fattening them up and and getting them fat for a steak or on your plate and getting them big you know silage is really good for just like you're maintaining your weight having good energy source and it's good for their their room and stomach so we always use up a lot i mean you can kind of tell this is a fairly big bunker that you use up but this is really good for you know cows it's just good energy for them and it still has corn in there which is good for them too but corn silage is just really a good source of energy um you know when we're walking through all these ingredients you just got to remember it's just like your your diet you got to have a nice balanced diet of different things and, and corn silage is a good energy source that we'll throw in and it's really heavy with the cows not so much the younger calves we won't feed as much of this too but this is just a really good energy source especially for our cattle that have baby calves Okay, so we're here at the hay pile. Uh, I had a video before you saw us grinding hay. If you didn't, maybe go check that one out to see how we get to this point. So this hay right here is a result from those bales that are over there. Uh, a certain mixture um, of so much alfalfa, so much grass hay, and we grind it up and we end up with all of this stuff. So this is, you know, another good source of just a diet to, or a part of their diet for the cattle um i always think about you know some of your your things you got to have was like your lettuce salad uh, i i kind of put that like hey but that might not be actually right but this um is fed a lot for those uh fat cattle that we're finishing off we'll mix this with the corn this has a mix of alfalfa and grass hay and this is just really fine uh ground up hay is what this is so You'll see this a lot real heavy in our, our cattle um, that are about ready to finish, go to the packing plant. And uh, yeah, it's just like anything else. You have a good balanced diet. Um, you throw this in here. This helps too. We have this pile. I always kind of think of it like, if you have bales like that, you know, maybe that's your potatoes and then they get mashed into here. And then this is your good carbohydrate type thing where you can, once you have mashed potatoes, you can do almost anything with them um, and mix it in with all of your ingredients. So maybe the corn is kind of your your steak. Maybe if you don't eat steak, think about it because it's really awesome. Um, this can be more of your salad and, uh, and or some of your other energy source. So okay, now we come in to this one. This probably looks the most interesting for you guys. The most weird. Let's get in here a little bit. So this is distiller's grain, straight from the ethanol plant. So this is the byproduct from the ethanol plant. 
Um, after they pretty much take the starch out of the corn, this is just a lot of protein mixed in here. The cattle love this stuff. Um, it really moistens up their mixture. Uh, it's, it's a good source of protein. It has to come in moderation, just like all this stuff out here. We can't put all corn or all hay, all silage. You gotta mix some stuff around. But this is an awesome, cheap source of, of uh, protein that we throw in with our finishing rations. And it really helps the ethanol plants out too and keep them going. So that's why ethanol plants around here just are really important as far as how much corn gets used as ethanol. But then this byproduct gets used a lot. And it's really kind of interesting stuff because you can kind of pick it up and you can just mash it almost like uh, snow when it gets really, really wet and then it falls in. Or even if I go like this, it'll pack in right there. So this is a good source of protein that people have started to use here when the ethanol plants came around where you, if you're putting on so much corn and hay, it get would get really dry and the cattle wouldn't want to eat all the rations. Just like if you had a protein shake and it doesn't taste very good and it's just all dry and it's, you mix it with water or whatever. This is like mixing in an awesome source of whatever you like to help them eat it. And they love it so much more. It puts a lot more moisture in that ration and they just love this, but it has to come in moderation. You can't give them too much. It's got like high contents and sulfur and it uh, won't necessarily be good for them. But this is uh, something that a lot of times is kind of catch people off guard. And this is our distiller's grain that we picked up from our local poet plant. This right here is our dry corn. So this corn came from those grain bins that we were over on the top. So just the corn right out of over there, ground up and gets fed out in the ration. So um, same as the wet corn, we just will mix this with the wet corn so that we have so much wet and dry that the cattle like to eat it. Like again, this is a good protein source. This gets used a lot when you're trying to finish out cattle. So right before they go to the packing plant, and you're really trying to fatten them up to get that last couple hundred pounds. This is where the stuff comes from. Got a little crust. It looks like it from when it rained here a couple days ago. Um, but this is just corn that we ground up again that it's uh, run through the mill. And now it's a little bit of a powder, but there's still some kernels in it. But uh, like I said, you don't feed this an extensive amount when the calves are young. But as they get older, you'll see more of the cows. We're not trying to fatten them up so much that the, the cows that have baby calves. So they'll get a little bit of this, but not much. You're not, like I said, for cows, you just want to maintain. Um, you don't want them to get fat um, for when they go to pasture. You just want them to be good milk producing moms for their baby calves and uh, do well out in the pasture. And then this last little bit right here, um, this is basically our vitamins. So whatever we can't, vitamins and minerals that we can't get with our, our rations from all the hay, the corn, the distillers, grain, silage, whatever it might be, this is it. I mean, I kind of think of like the, this is your Flintstone vitamins. I, I hope, I don't know, do they still make those? I wish they did. I loved them as a kid, but this is where you get your last little bit. So we're gonna feed this a lot more to the younger calves that maybe are just coming off their moms that we need to make sure that they stay healthy, um, don't get sick. They're gonna get a lot more of this stuff. You put it in a very small ration in there, just like your vitamins. I mean, they're just gonna be a little bit of your whole diet, um, but this is something that gets thrown in there as well. So I kind of walked you through all of everything. Like I said, you got your dry corn right there. We had our distillers grain over there. That's our ground hay. That's kind of the alfalfa grass hay mix up. Silage there and our wet corn. Flintstone vitamins over here. And then the grain bins would have the corn behind them and then the bales are gonna make up our ground up hay. So that's kind of in a nutshell. I might not have said everything 100% perfect. I know um, as to the analogies and everything, but this kind of gives you an idea of what we have out here and hopefully you enjoyed it. Thanks.